filming. Hi, I'm Jim Scher, and I want you to come on in the shop today and take a look at the Morris Minor project we've been working on. We, we did a film about it a while ago, and uh, now it's pretty much done. We've been road testing it, and everything seems to be working. But so come on in, and we'll take a look. We got it on the Morris Meyer project, it's, if you remember, if you saw the first film, it's, we used a Kubota diesel. Had a little Kubota tractor. It's an 1100 three cylinder turbo. And we're trying to build a fuel efficient car, is what was the goal of the whole thing. So here's the motor all in there. We can take a look at it. And it fit in quite well. That was all just by luck. When we started, it was, you know, whether it's going to fit and how everything's going to line up and all that part went pretty well. It's got a uh, Toyota um, five-speed manual from a, it's an 85 Corolla in there, adapted onto this engine. And this, the exhaust is pretty cool. This is from a pipeline in a barn from a milking station. So it's all stainless steel. That was just kind of something I had. A buddy of mine had that laying in his barn, a bunch of that pipe. So I was able to use that for the exhaust. Now, did you bend that pipe? Um, I bought these elbows pre-bent. Actually, the straight pipe I, it was all from the, the stanchion. And he had some of these, a couple of elbows, but I knew I was lacking a couple. So I found a place on the internet and bought them. They use them for, um, uh, they're for food products, you know, but you can buy I think they were like nine bucks a piece. Was well, the battery the same? The battery is just, yeah, any 12 volt battery. That one I just happen to have. That's a deep cycle. It doesn't really need that, but yeah, no, it's a 12 volt system. Let's have a look at the engine down here. And we got the same radiator from the Morris. Um, and the air cleaner was something I got on eBay. It was off a lawnmower or something. Could you point out the air cleaner? Oh, right here. So we had to make the mount to hold that and kind of do some piping to get that in there. And then we had to kind of, you know, do some funny piping here to get that in there. But the, the wiring on, on a diesel is very simple because there's really no ignition system. There's a, there's a solenoid that shuts the fuel on and off that stops the motor. And there's glow plugs, but that's about it. And the generator rather than a diesel in, or a gas engine which has, you know, a ignition system and there's no sensors or anything on this motor. It's a pretty simple little engine. So that's pretty much all your wiring right in here. Yeah. Right? Yeah, up a lot. There was a voltage regulator and there's a bunch of stuff I removed that we didn't need. All right, Jim, let's have a look underneath. All right, so we got it on the lift. We'll pick it up just for fun and we can take a look underneath. I'll set that down. challenge I'm having now is, is the, um, because this motor was on a tractor, it's got a, a governor, and it makes it awkward to drive every time you change the throttle setting with your foot, the governor automatically throws the throttle wide open, because it wants it to get to the point where you have your, where you set the throttle by hand by your foot, so it makes it want to lunge, it's kind of tricky to drive it. So you're confident, though, you can probably eliminate the governor? I think, well, yeah. Or control it in a better way. Yeah, I'm not sure how deep i got to get into the motor to get to it. But. All right, here we are underneath. Hey, you probably got to come out this way to get the light right. Yeah, so here's our, this Good is night. our five-speed from the Toyota Corolla. The speedo cable wouldn't work, wouldn't hook up to the speedometer that we had in the old Morris. So I'm, I have a GPS in there that I'm using for a speedo just to see how slow we're going. This is the drive shaft from the uh, Morris. This universal is from this transmission, and this is where I refastened it. I had to cut this apart and weld in the, you know, the more the, the, tr the differential from the. Um, I mean the universal from the Toyota onto the Morris drive shaft. And is there a special plate between the engine and the transmission? Let's see, engine and the transmission. Oh, this, yeah. This is the adapter plate. That's, that's the key part for this whole 
project. That that's a pretty big and complicated piece to make. And that there's a guy like I said in the first video that had done it. He he got it. You know you have to map it, and then once you get it in, in digital information, then you can make it on a CNC machine. So. Once you have that information, then it's not that hard to do, but it's going through that process of adapting this transmission to this motor. The, um, the clutch is from a different, it's from a Tercel, and there's a bunch of different parts in there that we had to kind of figure out, but getting, getting everything lined up there is a... Uh, and how many gears do we have now? It's a regular five-speed. Fifth being probably an overdrive. Yeah, and it's geared right now. This is how I did the clutch. It's got a cable activated clutch. This, we had to make all these, this stuff. But that all seems to be working pretty good. Jim's a busy man, but he'll get the phone later. Yeah, we'll get the phone later. Uh, here's our nice stainless steel exhaust. This is from a submersible well pump. I just ran the two pipes inside there and peppered them full of holes. It seems like that's quiet enough for the muffler. Originally, I just had a straight pipe through. Because I had that nice stainless, and I thought, oh, it's a small engine, it wouldn't be that loud, but it was whappy. It would whap, 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 whap. So you put a couple baffles yeah, inside? I just, yeah, I just ran the two pipes in like that, and I just peppered them all full of holes. Right. So that just, the, you know, it gives it some place for the sound to go a little bit. But that's that all nice stainless steel, isn't that sweet? <laughs> and then here's the rear drive. Yeah, the now the differential. Pumpkin. The differential on this car, right now it'll do. 60 miles an hour, and I'm, I'm not sure the RPM of the motor, but it's, you know, probably, it's probably about 2,500. It'd be nice if, um, <clears throat> to change this ratio so the car would go a little faster. I think it would help the fuel economy. Um, right now it's nice for the back rows because it'll really pull. It'll pull up any of these hills real easy. I'm surprised how much power that little engine's got. I, I, that really shocked me, but. A lot of torque off the yeah, diesel. Yeah, a lot of torque. A lot of torque. That's the. It, it kind of flattens out real quick. You push the pedal and it kind of lunges ahead, and then then it kind of stops. You know. Well, that comes in handy on this hilly farm. Yeah. And here's see you can here's a good shot of the rear engine mount that I had to make, or the uh, transmission mount. So these are the rubber mounts from the um, from the Morris, and this crossbar is. But see, I had to change. This is all new, and this part's all different from what it was, but. But it, would, it wasn't that bad, really. You know, this cavity between these two main beams, everything fit in. It's tight. You can see how close it is right here. I thought I was going to have to so it just fit in there, but it fit. I had to cut away the top of the bell housing because of the, uh, the, uh, the rack and pinion steering tube. I can't really see that, but it's up in here. I had to cut the top of the bell housing out. That was probably the hardest part fitting it, was getting that bell housing cut away, but once I got it in there, it's, she's all in there, pretty good. Well, very good. Yeah. Should we, let's lower her down and see how she runs. Yeah, so we got to do the fuel test. That's going to be the exciting thing to see what the actual mileage. Yeah, what it's going to get. And then I want to do some better um, noise dampening and vibration dampening in there. They got some good products that I can use. I put the carpets back in, but they didn't really fit either because I had to change the transmission tunnel in there. Right. That's a lot bigger than it was. It fit that new transmission in. So the carpets all don't quite fit. So that all adds to the noise levels. But the diesels are just loud. Let's see how. Here's a kind of a neat feature with this. What's that? The old Morris, you know, they remember they used to do this in cars, but they have these this is the it doesn't have a starter solenoid, it's just a big mechanical switch. 
Inside, you pull a cable, and it makes these two contacts, and that's what that's what spins the starter motor. Oh wow! You can't get simpler than that for no. starting. Yeah. That's kind of like taking a screwdriver and just crossing the connections. Yeah, basically that's it. And I, I left all that, you know, I incorporated that all into the system. So. Well, let's get in and give her a drive. Alright. We already did the very look at the motor, didn't we? Yes, we did. No, we didn't, did we? We did the motor first. Oh. Okay. Can you hear it get a little louder when this this thing is wrong? You know, everything starts to get loud. I got to put sound dead in and all this. Get in here and it sounds like a trump. <laughs> Doors all kind of shake a little bit. So I got my GPS. That's just so um so you got the map where we go. I put it on there and then see so that's how many miles I've driven it, how fast we're going when we're going. So because this is not hooked up. But the, the ignition and the oil light are hooked up and the and the fuel gauge. That's all hooked up. The pedals I had to change. See how close the pedals are together? Because this tally here is bigger. You couldn't fit your foot in there. I finally ended up. Satellite or something. Here we'll get out of the garage. so noisy you can still talk but yeah it, well you roll up the windows and certain keys certain rpms it'll start to wow 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 you know what i mean it'll... you can feel it has much more power than the older motor yeah and it's funny because it's rated at a lower horsepower really yeah it, just, it has more torque it's just the difference between a, a four-stroke engine and a diesel motor yeah gasoline and a diesel motor yeah Driveway. Brakes are working better than they did. I got these special brake pads. <laughs> They're from uh, oh, it's Porter, Porterfield Racing Company, California. What they are is they make brake pads for old vintage cars because the old vintage cars had asbestos. Right. And they were a softer compound, and they worked. That material worked pretty good then at the time. It stopped the car well, but it gave everybody cancer. Yeah. So nowadays they've changed all the pads, and the newer pad materials don't work as well with a, in a vintage system. So these guys are making these. They're making. I don't know what the compound is, but they're making them out of something that works pretty good. It's a soft compound where the brake will think, wear and versus, not the yeah, metal. Yeah. Versus a. Yeah, I think so. She's quite smooth on the...
almost like an automatic gas pedal. Yeah, huh? you can set the gas, take your foot off, and it just shuts off. You can just, it's like a tractor. You don't even have to change. You don't have to, you don't have to work with gas. Vibration kind of goes away at a certain yeah. speed. Yeah, yeah, but it kind of comes back. As soon as we get it out on the highway, it kind of. Yeah, when it slows down. It... as a regular yeah, gas Yeah, pull it engine. down to that, whatever that RPM setting is. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's the same. 